Bhagavad Gita, text 2.2 The Lord of Sri said, Arjuna, from where has this faint-heartedness come at the hour of fighting? It is not befitting a man of your character, an Aryan. It does not lead to heaven or a good reputation. As Krishna utters his first words of this chapter, the Gita refers to him as Sri Bhagavan. Sri indicates the goddess of fortune, and Bhagavan the supreme god who is possessed of all opulence. There is no meaning to Bhagavan without Sri, for the absolute devoid of Shakti is not Bhagavan but Nirvishesha Brahman, pure indifferentiated consciousness, devoid of form, lila, and so on, the spiritual halo of Bhagavan. Sri indicates the Shakti of Godhead, in relation with which Brahman, the Absolute, is known as Param Brahman, or Bhagavan, the Supreme Person. According to the Upanishads, Brahman is possessed of innumerable shaktis, parasya shaktir vivid deva shruyate, Svetasvatara Upanishad 6.8. The shaktis or potencies of Brahman are simultaneously one and different from him, as light and heat are one with and different from fire. Gaudiya Vedanta posits three principal potencies of the Absolute. Primary, Svarupa Shakti, Intermediate, Tathasta or Jiva Shakti, and Secondary, Maya Shakti. The primary Shakti of God is that by which he conducts his personal affairs. This Shakti is alluded to in the fourth chapter of the Gita, in relation to the descent of Godhead to the world of our experience. Bhagavad Gita 4.6 The predominant manifestation of this Shakti is Sri, who is the fountainhead of all of Bhagavan's innumerable Shaktis. She is the Shakti by which he himself feels blessed, the blessed Lord. The intermediate Shakti consists of the individual souls and the secondary Shakti is the material influence. These two Shaktis are introduced in chapter 7 and discussed in greater detail in chapter 13. Footnote 1, see Bhagavad Gita 7.4-5 and 13.1. Shiva Goswami has defined Bhagavan as Bhajaniya Guna Vishishta, he whose nature is such that whoever comes in touch with him cannot resist feeling moved to worship and adore his charming personality. Footnote 2. This is the explanation translation of Swami Bhakti Rakshak Shridhar. This explanation is in line with Parashara Muni's definition, but it emphasizes Krishna himself as opposed to a general conception of Bhagavan. Parashara Muni says that he who possesses all opulences in full, wealth, strength, beauty, fame, knowledge and renunciation is known as Bhagavan. This verse can be found in Veda Vyasa's Vishnu Purana 6.5.47, although it has been attributed to Parajamuni, the father of Vyasa. According to Jiva Goswami, the word Bhagavan is derived from Bhaga Vavan. Sri Jiva says that the A in the syllable Va is elided, enabling the two V's to join and become a single letter. Thus, Bhagavavan 
becomes Bhagavan. It means he who possesses Van, Pa, Ga, and Va. Pa represents Bharta, which implies the power to nourish or maintain. Krishna possesses the power to maintain and nourish his devotees. Ga stands for Gamaya Yita. It means he who has the power to grant love of God or bring God's devotees to his abode. Va stands for the verb Vas, which means to reside. Bhagavan is he in whom everything resides, and he who resides in the hearts of his devotees. Footnote 4, CBS 3 Here, Krishna addresses Arjuna by his given name. The name Arjuna means white, spotless or pure. Krishna addresses his friend and disciple to be by name to further emphasize that his reservation to fight is unbecoming for one so pure as to go by the name Arjuna. In this verse, Krishna dismisses all of Arjuna's reservations thus far. Sanjaya describes the basis of Arjuna's reservations as brimming with compassion. Bhagavad Gita 1.27 Here, Krishna dismisses this entire basis, asking Arjuna, from where has this faint-heartedness come? Krishna calls Arjuna's symptoms of fear faint-heartedness. Kashmalam. In response to Arjuna's five-verse speech about winning and losing kingdoms and nobility, Bhagavad Gita 1.31-35, to Krishna tells Arjuna that while speaking about that which is noble, his speech is not befitting a noble person, Anaryam. To Arjuna's five verses concerning not acting disgracefully, Bhagavad Gita 1.36-40, Krishna replies that he has attracted infamy, Akirti Karam. And to Arjuna's concerns about attaining heaven, Bhagavad Gita 1.41-45, Krishna tells him his speech will not lead him there, Asvargyam. Arjuna is thus shattered by Krishna's opening remarks, which are followed by Krishna's remedial measures. <laughs>